Great. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Arrow. I was not quite sure how long we would wait, but it looks like the numbers are going up and we'll continue to welcome people in. Um, I am Erin Uridis, the CEO of this wonderful organization, Out and Equal, and your hosts for this week. I hope it's been a great week. And today I'm really thrilled to be facilitating, helping uh, in the facilitation of the only workshop session I'm doing this for this week, because as you can imagine, we've got lots going on, um, but this was a program that is especially near and dear to my heart, which is um, a story and some practices uh, that have come out of a very special program we started um, last year for the first time we had to do virtual summit uh, called the buddy program. And we thought for a while, like we should come up with something more sophisticated, but I think this really kind of matches the vibe of our community because summit is so much more than just about like the learning of the workshops. It really is about all those connections that people make in the elevator, in the classroom, on the dance floor, you know, at the plenaries. Um, there's just so much. And I, you know, my vision for this really comes out of a background and some experience in the field of change management, but even kind of more specifically in, in public participation and in, and in stakeholder engagement. That is really my, my specialty. And I have seen magic really work wonders when organizations don't see themselves as the ivory tower, just like broadcasting out, you know, learning and then walking away, but really um, sitting at the center of what, you know, I've always called a real learning community, a very dynamic learn learning community where you provide the platform to help make this learning and connection happen. And then you let people go out and work their magic, but really stay in touch so that you understand what happened with the idea that these practices come back into the community. So um, if I were like the most creative writer at Pixar or a Disney, uh, I could not have written this story to be kind of more magical and special than it has turned out to be. Um, so, you know, uh, I can't wait for you all to really get, you know, get into hearing what, what happened today, uh, what would happen this last year, because essentially, um, you know, and some of you all who have been around and, and were in Washington to see James and Allison uh, kind of come together on stage and tell their story. I, I had a vision also that when we were to launch the buddy program, just hoping that people would connect with each other before, during, and after summit, that there would be a moment, this story, and all of these stories hopefully come to light. And so, um, you know, I think through what you're about to hear, and what we're going to be in conversation today with three very special people, um, that this really uh, has been powerful. And I hope you all kind of um, dig in today and take this idea of staying connected and just picking up the phone. It's not really rocket science, but like doing the work on the relationship and hopefully it won't be work. It'll feel like fun. Um, but taking your relationships with your new friends and colleagues that you meet here and doing something magical with it. So that was really my vision. I think um, the details of this are about to come out. So I want to turn it over to Mallory, um, who's going to take us through some icebreakers and then we'll get and some introductions, and then we'll really get into the meat of this soon. Yeah, so I know it's Friday, so this is day three of Summit. I'm sure you all are Zoom professionals by now. So if you could let us know a little bit about where you're calling in from, if you go to the top of your screen, there should be a drop down for view options. And if you click the annotate tool, you can select a stamp. And I'd just like to see from where, where some of these folks are, where y'all are calling in from, where do you sit? And I'll go ahead and put mine. I'm in Nashville, so I'm gonna try to stamp Middle Tennessee somewhere around there. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting to see because you know we've got you know participants from all over the world here. All right, yeah, there's Aaron.
So if, at the how to stamp and zoom, if you are in the meeting itself, you should, there's, when you move your mouse, you should see a drop down at the top that says view options. Well, if it's not working for y'all, just type in the chat. <laughs> yeah. No option if you're viewing through the pathable link there, that may be what it is. But yes, okay, Washington, St. Louis, Missouri. All right, Madison, Wisconsin, Atlanta, India, there we go, Panama City, Guadalajara, Ecuador. Yes, yes, lots of Connecticut, South Dakota. Yeah, there's another era of St. Louis as well. <laughs> all right. Well, so thank you all so much for joining. I know, I know for a bit of you, it's it's rather late in your day, especially those uh, in India and in other parts of the world. So there's another one here that we had a stamp uh, annotation, which maybe if it's not working, we'll you know just go with uh, leveraging the chat here. So can you go on to the next slide, Arrow? Now I'm doing all the stamps. I can't get to the next slide. <laughs> Somebody has to tell me how to turn off my annotation. If you if you there's a red like X, the X. You click that it'll it'll allow you to advance back to the presentation. There's an X. I only see stop share. All right, sorry technical difficulties. I'm gonna have to stop sharing and then I'm gonna share again just so I can get the sounds good. Get control back. There we go. All right, so, um, and maybe for those of you who haven't annotate uh, stamp issues here, if you could just indicate whether or not you participated in the past or currently in the buddy program, or if maybe you just, what is the buddy program? You know, that's, that's another option there if you're just not familiar with it here. So yeah, let's go ahead and, yes, this year, Beth, excellent. Yeah, I'll go ahead and stamp mine. Yeah, what is the buddy program? Yes. So maybe you'll learn a little bit about this and you know you can take part in future years or just make leverage the connections you've made this this summit here this week at Out and Equal to kind of make that connection even if you weren't formally you know connected with somebody at the summit here. Perfect. All right. So I I suppose I'm glad I'm glad we were able to get some of this. You know, sorry for the difficulties here, but you know, thank you for participating and, and putting your responses in the chat and, and bearing with us. But yeah, let, let's go on. I think, you know, Ray, if you would tell maybe a little bit about, about yourself. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. So my name is Ray Stewart, and uh, my pronouns are she, her, her. I am with the Boeing company. Um, my day job at Boeing is to work on the air launch cruise missile program. Um, I'm in a program integration role, and then I also support our site leadership in a site support role. Uh, my gay job at Boeing is uh, supporting the DEI organization as a um, BEPA Enterprise Vice or, excuse me, BEPA Enterprise President, and uh, I have, we have 2020, 22 chapters across the United States and internationally. Um, a fun fact about me, um, I know everyone loves my props, so I've actually ridden my motorcycle on the Daytona Speedway. Um, and then um, one of my greatest accomplishments. So when Mallory and Arrow asked me to share a greatest accomplishment, I wasn't really sure what to share, but um, I, I guess I would say I've been able to coach both a college and a high school softball team to um, state championships. So here's some more props on my ring and my softball. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Mallory Schneider. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I sit in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and I am a risk and financial advisory manager at Deloitte. I focus in IT risk and security for external audits, um, largely with uh, global companies and SEC registrants of auditing information systems. Uh, my my gay job, which you know is is just as much time and maybe quite a bit more excitement, is you know working within a trans and non-binary working group um, that kind of interfaces with multiple different communities and BRGs across Deloitte here to make sure that our voices are heard, that we're, you know, promoting and advancing, you know, trans and NB, you know, initiatives within Deloitte and making sure that those, when those policies are developed, that we're actually consulted in that because a lot of times things happen in a vacuum and, and they don't reach out to members of the community to hear those voices and so visibility and also 
you know, representation is very important. And that's, that's uh, you know, what, what I do and what I'm truly passionate about. Uh, I'll go with fun facts. So in, in a previous life, I was a traveling uh, solo acoustic artist uh, under the name of Aquariums. And I, I had a beard probably about down to here. So it's very, very much different. I also have four young children, uh, school age and, and under. So it's, it's a busy house. They're not with me this week. So you won't, you won't get to see them, but it's always kind of a treat when, when they make a surprise Zoom appearance during a work meeting or any sort of presentation. But yeah, thank you for, for having me. I look forward to this presentation. And Eero, if you want to go ahead and tell a little bit about yourself. I love when Mallory's kids pop up. It's awesome. Um, my name is Eero Royston. Uh, I work for the Boeing Company. I'm a graphic designer by day. My gay job is I am the Enterprise Executive Vice President of DEPA. Um, Ray is our president. And I am also a founding member of our Racial Equity Task Force at Boeing, which is also an enterprise organization. Um, and I am also the executive board member for LGBTQ plus advocacy organization in Missouri called Promo. Um, and my fun fact is that uh, tomorrow, Saturday, I will be inducted um, into the Hall of Fame for my collegiate track and field accomplishments. So very excited about that. And it's gonna be a, another teachable moment because that is a pre-transition accomplishment. So it'll be interesting to go back as Arrow. And Erin, I don't think you have to introduce yourself because we know who you are, but feel free to. Yeah. Well, I know, I mean, well, hopefully I, I said enough. Um, some of you, I, I'll just mention that, and it's kind of tied to the work that you folks are doing, and frankly, all the participants uh, who came to, who are at Summit this week. But, you know, I went to my first summit like 20 years ago, and I had just come out in my ERG, and we were only 300 people back then at Disney um, about 20 years ago. And, um, you know, and then went on to serve on the board. So I have a long history with this uh, organization, but I, I guess a, an interesting fact is that I had to step away kind of out of the community for nine years. I was living overseas and it was very far. So I wasn't able to come back for summit um, but got reconnected and, you know, obviously so thrilled. The rest is history, uh, I guess. So anyways, I want to throw out that a fun fact also, Mallory, is that you are looking very Jackie O today. So just wanted to say that. <laughs> well, thank Fabulous. You. Also, tomorrow is <laughs> my birthday. Hence the wow. Day. Okay. Happy birthday. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get started um, with these questions, but before I do that, we had a good question already, which is what, what's the buddy program? So if you have shown up today and don't know what it is, that is okay. And let me just set some context here by telling you that um, what, what the buddy program is, is actually when you signed up for registration. And if you did that early on enough, because at some point we kind of closed the doors, there wasn't enough uh, time for people to then kind of participate in it fully was if you sign up for registration we and you click the box that you wanted to participate as a buddy, we then randomly paired you up with two other people and sent you uh, sent everybody the contact information and then some guidance about meeting questions uh, that you could do over Zoom before, during, and after summit. Um, and so we gave some guidance and then really we didn't over-engineer this and we did not try to do like matching up of industries or trans people together. No, it's because if you end up in an elevator at summit and you have a magical conversation, you make the most of that opportunity and we connect as humans, right? No matter, it's like, the, it's up to the fate of the universe and how we are put together. Uh, so we had almost 2000 people sign up for buddies this year, which is a whole lot more than last year. And I would just tell you that if you didn't have a chance to participate in buddies, we are going to try to take this idea and keep it going before summit next year. I think that that's a way we're going to leverage all this momentum in zoom and what we've come uh, become accustomed to and really actually get that magic started. So if, if you're able to come with us next year and you weren't able to participate, just know number one, that we'll bring it again. But number two, please consider people you've connected with in summit. Even if you go and seek people out in the platform, those there's no reason that you couldn't just 
start your own buddy trio or, you know, quad, for example, from people that you have met. Um, so please do that. And uh, just kind of take, uh, make that be your experience. So thank you so much um, for letting me set that context. I should have done that up front, but that's the buddy program. Um, so we're going to jump in right now and, and you see this is a chance encounter. Um, Ray and Mallory, I want to start uh, with both of you. And if you can tell us the story of how you met um, and maybe, you know, not knowing what it was last year, it was brand new. What were your thoughts and feelings going into that first session? And like, what were you expecting to get out of um, the buddy program? Okay, I'll, I'll go first now. Um, so for me, I signed up last year um, just to meet new people. That was like my ultimate goal. I personally really enjoy getting engaged in the out and equal programming, you know, just to get that full summit experience. For me, I've been attending out and equal. It's been well over 10 years now. I've been at the company for 14. So I think I've been um, at out and equal for about 12 years and networking is by far like my favorite part of out and equal. Um, it's those lasting friendships uh, that I've leveraged to really create meaningful change um, over time. I actually still stay in touch with all kinds of people that I've met, some from the past years. Um, some of them I, I do workshops with every year. So shout out to Ash, Kevin, and Will, who I think are in the meeting today. And then um, some people I just meet up with once a year, usually at Out and Equal, and we'll have a drink or we'll just kind of check in with each other. But there are so many people from over the years that I like leverage in my day-to-day -day life and, and in my leadership role at Boeing, especially for the LGBTQ community. Um, so yeah, that first meeting, it was a little nerve wracking for me. I've really never met anyone virtually before, so I wasn't sure what to expect or what I was getting into, but, um, what was cool is that, you know, we, I met with, um, Alan, he was the, he's uh, on your board of directors and then Mallory and for that first meeting. And it was like, Mallory was being new. She just wanted to learn and absorb so much information. So it was, it made it very relaxed for me. She was like coming to me for advice. And so I didn't feel any pressure that I had to like impress anyone. I could just be myself with no expectations. So that's my perspective. Mallory, how about you? Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, last year, 2020 was, was my first summit. Um, and there were a lot of firsts in 2020 of, of sitting alone in your room, doing work in a hundred percent remote environment. And, you know, I, I'd heard so much about what Summit was and when it was announced that it was all virtual, I was like, well, how, how is this community, how are these meaningful relationships gonna be established? And so, you know, as a participant, I wanted to make sure that I was taking full advantage of, of everything that was offered in order to connect with people in and outside of, of my organization. And like, I'm no exception, you know, and, and most, most people are not big fans of, you know, structured networking, but I, I wanted to go into that first meeting with, you know, Ray and, and Alan with, you know, kind of a, an open mindset, an um, open mindset and, a, you know, a willingness to learn and, and just see from, from them who had participated in Summit in the past of, of what could they tell me about certain things to not miss. And, you know, I, I had no expectations or parameters and just to see where the relationship, you know, may or may not take us. And, you know, Ray and I were able to continue meeting after Out and Equal throughout the year. And, and you'll learn more about that. And it was just such, such a wonderful experience and such a great, great way to you know, establish this relationship with with somebody who at this time last year was was a complete stranger. And now, you know, I would consider, you know, a very dear friend. And then this group grew, right? So Ray, can you tell us the story of how Arrow joined you? Yeah, sure. So um, I actually had a standing meeting on my calendar every Friday to meet with Arrow to just talk through different Boeing Employee Pride Alliance strategy type things. I'm the president, as you heard, he's the vice president. And this was kind of our one-on-one -on -one time to just connect as friends, but also um, mentor each other in like a peer-to-peer -peer relationship type thing. Uh, we work on a lot of things like resumes and just helping each other prepare for interviews, things like that. And concurrently, um, you know, Mallory and I had already been meeting for quite a few months by this point, and we were just having those um, those hard conversations, I guess, about what it would be like to just continue. Well, first of all, she was telling me all the great work that she was doing at Deloitte in terms of trans inclusion. And then we started brainstorming ways to make each of our companies even better, um, specifically as it relates to, uh, relates to like trans benefits um, issues and things like that. And I had shared with her that I had an employee who had reached out to me for some help and they had questions on 
WPATH and WIG coverage. And, and just to be honest, I lacked the resources and the knowledge to even be able to help them. Like I, I had no idea where to turn. And luckily for me, Mallory had our, you know, she just let me know that she's already done tons of research on this and she had all the connections and resources that we could possibly need and, and that she was willing to share that stuff with us. So um, that's when I brought in Arrow. I wanted to share some of that information and some of those ideas with him, not only to connect to the work that we were doing for BEPA, but um, just, I also consider Arrow to be like one of our trans and non-binary liaisons for Boeing. Um, he's part of the leadership team in terms of our e-board for the LGBTQ community, but he's also that direct link to our gender transition team. So I invited him to a standing meeting that I had with Mallory, and we were just planning to discuss some of these resources. And um, it, it honestly, they just, they hit it off right away. It was so cool. Um, she had actually attended one of Arrow's workshop set, sessions from last year. And so they had something in common to talk about, and she was so excited about that. And then I think the rest is just kind of history. That's amazing. And I can't wait to hear, um, Ara, I know you're going to jump in here uh, soon. I, I want to ask you all, you know, I love this expression um, that many of you may have heard of, which is we shouldn't just be, uh, it's uh, something like um, we should be human, like really human beings and not human doings. <laughs> and, you know, I'm asking here about what I would love to know what all three of you think your greatest accomplishments are. And then either now or maybe later when we talk about like real impact, I know this has had a, a great deal of impact on you three as people and, and your hearts as well. But just let's start from like the best practices and like what you actually concretely accomplished as a result of this relationship and the work you're trying to do at your companies? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'll start. And to me, it was about creating that space, you know, to have those open conversations and discussions. Um, it started with just giving information about what Boeing is doing, what Boeing has done. You know, I explained about our gender affirmation team, that it helps individuals to trans transition to their affirmed gender and, you know, we have like a team like that as well and benefits, which what's funny is, you know, me and Mallory were having that discussion about, you know, when you call benefits and you, you have a question and they're like, oh, well, what is being, what is transgender? And so you have to basically educate that person before you can get help for them to be like, oh, I can't help you. Let me transfer you to someone else. And, you know, for a trans person, I already have to, you know, self-disclose when have this invasive conversation, it's very uncomfortable. So, you know, we created a team within our benefits team that are like trans professionals. They, they're subject matter experts. So when you call, they just automatically transfer you to that department. Um, so you don't have to go through all those, you know, steps to get, to get help. So um, that was one of the, the main things that came from like having those conversations and then Mallory is like, oh, that's a good idea. So it's just that changing of, you know, what are you doing? What can we do better? And, you know, you don't have to end up educating to get help. So um, that's, that's it for me. <laughs> Mallory, what about you? Yeah, I mean, totally, totally agree, Arrow. And just the information sharing, I think it's been the, the most beneficial, you know, thing that we've had. And you know, one of the, I guess, you know, another kind of success or accomplishment, I don't, I don't know how you would frame it, but for me, it's just been the, the accountability that we hold each other to, that it's, it's not just talk, that every month, you know, Ray and Arrow and I would, ha would have a meeting or, you know, turned into weekly as, as Summit gained closer. And what we would do is we would talk about things. And then the next time we would talk about what, what we did to move on those goals. And, you know, and I wanted to come to the meeting, not saying like, well, I, I haven't done anything for the past month. I just thought about it and it, it sat there, you know, cause a lot of that happens a lot, especially when you're dealing with, you have a day job and you have a gay job is that the things that don't generate revenue or don't impact performance and all that kind of fall to the bottom of the list. And so Ray and Era have been super instrumental in, in making sure that this work doesn't just fall flat, that it continues to move. And, and while it's a long road and a long process, you know, we have, we're in it together and we're, we're all walking together and kind of the, the reciprocity of, of the sharing of best practices within Boeing and Deloitte of what we're thinking, what we're doing and what we've learned from other things. It's, it's helped to bring 
both of our organizations, you know, to a higher level and that it's not, you know, information is, is power, but information is not power to be wielded and, and clubbed or to be kind of you know, held tightly as, as if you don't want to share that because we all benefit when we all share openly and honestly and, and have that. And I, I just, it's it's been amazing, you know, being able to to work with these two over the past year, and yeah, I would just say accountability and and continuing to move that needle, you know, through over time. Yeah, and so for me, Erin, I think um, you know I kind of shared this during the plenary, but for me, it was definitely through the Buddy program that Mallory was able to provide those resources on trans benefit for weight coverage to make changes at Boeing. Um, you know, Mallory had provided so much information on like the stipends and the transition expenses. And then I was able to take all this information to our global benefits team. And we just compared it to adoption assistance programs and tuition reimbursement programs that we already had in place at Boeing. And then we, you know, Arrow and I even threw in the little request um, back, to, it's tied to back to their mission statement where they said, you know, we promise to continue to review the package and to ensure we offer flexible suite of benefits and programs that meet the needs of our diverse workforce now and in the future. And so when we tied it back to their mission, it was like so quickly, it was, I mean, literally within the email that I sent off until we found out that, that everything was changed, it was literally within 30 days that leadership was able to find a way to make it happen. So, so yeah, I would definitely say the greatest accomplishment was um, for me, for me personally, it was when the employee had reached back out and just said, I finally feel like I belong like that. That's what hit home the most. And um, I would also say that this relationship that I've developed with Allard, with Mallory and, and Arrow, with these two, uh, I mean, they just helped drive so much change. I mean, it's, it's even beyond this, which I think you'll hear later in the presentation, just through the ideas and the connection, the resources. Um, I can't help to mention that their inspiration has just made me a better person. And in, in general, it's just made the LGBTQ community so much better. And I just, I'm so thankful. So there, there's a lot of great accomplishments that came from this. So Aaron, I'm gonna turn this over to you. You know, we opened up with your vision of the Buddy Program. Um, do you feel like it's lived up to your vision that we've lived up to your vision? And, and how does this play into like the overall strategy and purpose of, of Out and Equal? Yeah. Well, like I said, and thanks, thanks Ray for asking. I mean, like I said, I think um, if this were, you know in the hands of some big film company it couldn't really have been written any better. You know, I think we went into virtual with a deep desire and passion to still bring the summit experience to make that be connective and not just informative. And we've always, we know that just inherently because there's a lot of peer to peer learning that information can be exchanged, but I just don't think we really, um, uh, we probably underestimated even how powerful linking people together could be at a moment when it's not just COVID, but the economic, you know, crisis that happened meant that, and we all know that a lot of DEI work or teams uh, was either cut or we were all just under such pressure that it became more difficult to do the gay job part, right? Because everybody's got like kids at home who are learning and we've got a million things to do and people are getting sick um, or worse, you know, around us with COVID. And so I think that what I'm so proud of that, that you all did, you know, I don't have to tell anybody like connecting with people isn't rocket science in this way, but it does with kind of the pressure of the last year and a half, I think, it does sometimes make it like one more thing you have to do to like pick up that phone, but reaching out. And I think you all see this, there's a, you know, what I think has really come true in my vision for this um, is not just that learning with all three of you, but just like how much richer the experience has been. And you helped each other shortcut through a lot of just like accelerate through the mistakes, right? Not having to reinvent the wheel. That's actually not only what Summit's about, but it's why we started the Global Hub. And many of you who are in this session, I can see all the attendees. Many of you are with companies who are member sponsors about Equal. And if you are a member sponsor, people on the DEI teams and heads of ERGs, you have access to this resource that has hundreds and hundreds of resources in it now. And that's a digital a digital space where, you know, I just imagine the global hub being like the house 
that when you all are, the three of you are not doing like one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with each other, that like all the buddies, right? You know, all of the community of Out and Equal that is helping each other uh, accelerate through mistakes, not reinventing the wheel, that that's the place we do it. So Ray, I think to your question, it, it has, this whole approach is our strategy. This approach is being at the center of a learning community, period. And that is um, really was kind of a radical transformation of how Out and Equal does business. And um, I think it's right on, frankly, because, and you all are evidence of that, uh, it enables this to happen. It enables you all to do your jobs better and be more efficient in um, sharing best practices, right? And then all the personal stuff and all the heartwarming stuff of how you all have enriched each other's lives and learned about each other's identities and even, you know, industries and companies that's like icing on the cake. Right. But it's also, maybe it's not, maybe it's not the icing. Maybe it is the cake. I'm not sure. Um, now I'm, now I'm thinking about mimosas again and Roxanne Gay. Right. <laughs> and actually that, that might mean lead me to my final point here, which is what Roxanne said um, yesterday about, you know, really, really wanting companies to, um, first of all, people want to do this work and they should just do it, but that is largely enabled by companies who resource this well and give funding and support people in ERGs. But then what I love about what she said about accountability, right? It's like, you know, we need to kind of hold our companies accountable, accountable. We need to hold each other accountable. But what you all brought up, and I'll just end with this, is how you then we're like an accountability group. And I'm just thinking about all of you who are on this, you know, on this session right now, maybe hold yourself accountable um, if it works for you to come out of this session, out of this week. And if there was one workshop that offered you a, um, I mean, outside of whether or not you did buddies, right? If there's one workshop that really spoke to you and you're watching companies like Boeing or Deloitte or any one of them who are presenting and saying, how did they do this? Look them up on the platform before you get out. We're keeping it open until the 29th. You have three weeks, jot down and like hold yourself accountable for making that call, right? Like reach out to somebody and say, can I connect with you on this and see what happens out of that? Because I think, um, besides formal buddies, the whole system now and, and the way that Out and Equal will continue to serve you all is set up to support these bonds. And so um, short answer is yes, my vision has been realized. <laughs> um, and listen, I, you know, I know you're not the only ones out there, but I'm just so thrilled that we could like really focus on your story and for all of you, hopefully, to see in this one interaction over this last year that this is possible. It really is. Um, so thank you all for inviting me. I know I, I'm not able to facilitate this full session because I have to jump out, but I wanna thank all three of you um, for inviting me to be part of this and for just making this buddy uh, program, like you really embody what we were trying to do here. So congratulations to all of you. And I hope all of you on, you know, definitely ask questions at the end here. I know the three of you are going to give some more information. Um, I'm going to take my camera off now. I'm going to stay on because I hope to be able to pop back on, but I'll turn over the facilitation uh, to um, you, Ray. Okay. Sounds good. Aaron, thanks so much for the opportunity and thanks for being here today. You're so welcome. Thank you oh my so gosh. much. Thank you, Aaron, and Out and Equal for, for everything y'all do. It's just, it's amazing. We wouldn't be here without y'all, so thank you. Thank so, you Errol, so Errol, I think we're going to go ahead and go to the next slide, which is the best practices. And with that, um, so this is really a question for you and Mallory both. Mallory, we'll start with you, but um, so we've been doing a lot of great work. We've been sharing ideas back and forth and having those hard conversations. Can you each just kind of share some of the best practices that have had an impact at your organization um, that's really kind of driven from the conversations that we've had? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, you know, many of the best practices that, that we've shared have had a direct impact on the trans and envy working group that I'm a part of at, at Deloitte. And we've, we've tried to focus, there's kind of like, I'll separate it into kind of like 
hard things and soft things more around like actual benefits and coverage and procedures versus things that you can do to build community and relationships within your organization. And we focus a lot more on the building of community because that's something that you can do without a lot of official support and you don't and there's not a whole lot of red tape bureaucracy and roadblocks there. And so what we've what we've done is, you know, with the input of this group here is is taken that and we've created a, a shared transgender and non binary support inbox that you know is monitored by a few members of the community so it's not not monitored by some IT person that has no exposure to it. It's a shared inbox that you can reach out to for support and to be connected with other people um, who are within the community or, or allies and point you in directions of where you can find policy information and all of that within Deloitte. And so, you know, we've we've used that to kind of establish a, a recurring social hour for, you know, the trans and non-binary members here that, that have self-identified as such. You know to kind of create that community and have a space for people out during the normal working hours to to connect and share you know grievances and successes and just just get to know other people um and we've also worked on building a central hub for all of the you know trans and non-binary uh you know support and information and resources there um within the deloitte internet both for members of the community that kind of help and guide you through your transition as, as well as you know allies and ways that you can take what you can learn and, and bring dei back to your local engagement team, to that local pod level rather than the overall like higher end uh higher up you know deloitte level there and you know we've also you know while while the implementation of medical benefits is, is a really slow process that's something that the research that we've shared back and forth of, you know, best practices of what the standards in the industry say and what different companies are offering to kind of get in line with that uh, based upon, you know, public data and studies that are out there showing to build that business case that basically shows like these things cost pennies per person at your organization, but they have a profound impact on the individuals that actually need them and make use of them and to kind of build that and further the case for advanced and enhanced medical benefits that go beyond you know hrt labs confirmation surgery which is kind of like that base level coverage for the hrc equality index you know which which is good it's a starting point but i don't think it's a goal it's it's a stepping stone to where we all need to go and 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 maybe arrow you can share a little bit about you know what what your benefits and best practices have, have been at Deloitte. i mean at, at boeing as an outcome of this group here yeah definitely um so some of the things we started doing you know after you know the wig benefits and things like that we started it, it made us ask the question right so we wanted to be more inclusive you know just to all brgs right diversity isn't one size fits all so we started asking questions and having roundtables and saying, you know, what are what else are we not covering, right? Understanding that benefits do aid in retention of employees, and you know, sometimes we don't know what to advocate for until our employees tell us what they need. So when we get that information, we can take it to our well-being team or our leadership team or wherever it needs to go. So in the past two years, we've been very like hyper focused on trans inclusion and visibility like never before across our enterprise um and i'm proud to you know shout out to our our brg chapters um and bipa for you know have they've joined efforts for you know including the trans and non-binary employees in everything they've done um the, within the past year from watch parties we had like a watch party for jess charlie the life and death of marcia p johnson we've even watched disclosure um, and then last year we had the first um, enterprise-wide transgender day of remembrance with all the chapters um, and with executive participation. So, you know, that's just something beautiful. Um, so I think this relationship has really helped us with trans inclusion. Um, another one of our trans advocates asked me, you know, who's going to advocate for the trans community when you leave the board? Because my term is coming up at the end of this year. Um, and which was a good question. So we created a trans inclusion lead for our enterprise board um, and which we are in the process of recruiting right now. Ray, did you have anything to add? Um, I don't specifically, but I, I didn't know if maybe you could talk about some of the work that you're doing around, um, maybe mention beta and, and BetFam. And then also I know you and Trinity are put a lot of work into like the 
the trans summit for the first ever trans summit next year. So could you talk about a little bit about that? And then I know Trinity did a lot of work with Leanne for the first ever pride event. Um, so may maybe you could mention some of that. Yeah, definitely shout out to Trinity for, you know, reaching out to one of our Boeing CEOs and saying, hey, you know, the trans community is here and we need an advocate. And that CEO, you know, pulled Trinity to the stage and said, you know, let's have an event and me and you, you know, have a coffee talk and invite the enterprise and let's talk about trans awareness. So that was amazing. So shout out to Trinity for that. Um, also, we have our first ever trans summit um, in the works for 2022. Um, and we already have an amazing openly trans speaker lined up. Um, so really excited for that. Uh, shout out to um, Beta, which is our Boeing Employee Transgender Association. And then shout out to BetFam, which is newly um, set up this year. It's our Boeing Employee um, Family Transgender, sorry, <laughs> Boeing Employee Transgender Family Members um, Group. And they were stood up this year. So, and, you know, we've also been intentional of sharing all these, all these stories across our enterprise. So, you know, we're even, we're even more well on our way for a more inclusive company. And then we're going to move on to impact. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's so wonderful just hearing y'all talk about what you've been able to accomplish at, at Boeing here, you know, and your best practices and, and what's come out of this. And I was wondering, Ray, if, if, you know, if you were to call away out, like one key takeaway, you know, from this past year of like, what, what stands out mm -hmm. to you as, as most impactful that's come out of this relationship and, you know, our just connection? Hmm. Um, I would probably say I couldn't limit it to just one. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Um, but Truthfully, it's it's the networking experience that's led to change in policy and benefits for Boeing. That's that's primary most important thing that's been very impactful. Um, probably the sharing of ideas and best practices to help make our LGBTQ plus community um, just, especially our trans community, better at Boeing. And then I think for me personally, which is probably where I've had the most impact, it's moving from that being an everyday ally to the trans community to being like a true advocate for the community. Errol, what about you? Yeah, definitely. So um, mine, I think I would say the in engagement and relationships, you know, getting to know Mallory, talking about our transitions, you know, it's more about it's it's more than just about the business. It's about being human. And, you know, ugh, the best part is when her kids come downstairs and they're like in the video and in the Zoom call and she's like, okay, honey, let's go back upstairs now. And they're just like, hi, Errol, or hi. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> and, you know, she's rolling her eyes. But like, that's like the best part is like getting to know the personal side of someone as well as being an advocate. So um, I think, you know, establishing that relationship and then, you know, making it evolve to where I have someone I can count on, you know, that shares my same experience of being a trans person in leadership and driving change through um, BRGs. So that's what's really important for me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for, for me, the, the benefits really extend beyond Boeing and Deloitte. And I think the most impactful thing is, is really just the personal human connection that I've, I've made with, with y'all too. And and, and just what we've what we've what we've done and just what we've shared over the past year in this you know this new world that we're we're living in and, and navigating and and that the the benefits extend beyond just our organizations and to the greater LGBT community as a whole you know and that the the DEI work that we're doing is is not really about just improving or the focus shouldn't be just improving things within the walls of your organization but using that power of of networking and resources offered through out and equal through the global hub that Aaron had just talked about previously and, and and connections that you make as well as what you learn in these summit experiences and workshops and um to take those and make a difference within your organization within your home within your communities and that you, you can do this and you can make a difference regardless of the industry, regardless of your employer and regardless of who you are. You don't have to be some big megastar. You can 
you can do the work that needs to be done if you see that there's nobody else doing it. And I, I think that's kind of been what's been most impactful to me is that it's possible, change is possible. And it's possible even if you would think yourself to be nobody. So Errol, we could probably flip the slide there. Um, so to... it looks like I'm having computer issues with my Zoom because I'm on the right slide on my side. And jettison it, we don't need a slide. It's just some words anyway. It's fine. So, so what I'm what I want to hear about and I'm, what I'm sure everyone here wants to hear about is, you know, what's next? So Mallory and Arrow, it's been the question of the week to me. Everyone keeps asking, what are you? And so without giving away too much, what do you see as the next big area of focus for this group and then for other light groups similar to ours? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll take it first here. And, you know, I think the, the obvious fight for expanded and enhanced medical benefits is one. That, that, that fight's not over. It, it, it is growing and it is getting better as, as more things are covered, considered, you know, reconstructive versus aesthetic or cosmetic. But I, I'm, I'm really energized by the need to focus more holistically on well being, and especially within this advocacy space of, you know, historically BRGs, ERGs, and companies do have done a really great job of making sure that the anti discrimination policies and those the tone from the top there is, is, is promoting, you know, all, all of these, these positive things of inclusion, diversity, and equity within their four walls of their organization and making sure that their employees are catered for when they're on site. But in light of, in light of COVID and, and remote workforce and the workforce of the future or new normal, whatever your organization is calling it, like, we're no longer at the corporate offices. We're no longer at the plant site necessarily. And so what what, what do we do? What is, what is industry's role and what is, you know, um, the company's job of supporting their colleagues and well-being in, in your daily lives outside of work? Because you may not sit, you may sit in a place that has onerous discriminatory legislation that, um, you know, affects, affects your productivity, your happiness, your work life. And, and what's, what's the role of, of organizations? What's the role of, of corporations in caring for those people now that they don't reside physically in, in any one spot across the world of how do you make sure that you're, you know, you know fighting for your, your people and the marginalized groups within and without the four walls of your organization and caring for people where, where they sit and where they work, wherever that may be. Yeah, that's, right. that's, Eric, you that's a good point. Off? Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, my computer is going crazy over here. Um, so what I would say is, you know, corporations have the power to end discrimination of all demographics. If you really think about it, the biggest incentive to do good and do right is a job, right? You need that to survive. So if you're inclusive and respectful, you get to work here. And if you're not, you don't, you know? And I think, people will shape up really fast if they are educated along this route and there's a no tolerance for discrimination of any form. If, co if corporations can do better in advocacy outside of the business, the business by being intentional, intentional about doing business with others who has their same values, there's power in that, especially in um, businesses like ours, you know, and I'm looking forward to what we can do on the exterior side, public relations side, you know, as far as change goes. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for us. And we are working on something big, something big, and there's something that's going to make a bold statement intersection, intersectionally. And I'll just leave you all with that. So I don't know if my slides are working. Um, They're but not, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, Zoom is, <laughs> my Zoom is froze. So I'm going to move to our Q&A slide. I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, now we're going to open up the floor for questions and uh, feel free to throw a question in the chat or if one of you can take questions because my computer is freezing up, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, here's here's two that are really kind of timely and, and, and poignant from Beth here. It says, you know, 
at what point do you begin to push back for the cultural changes you're working on, but not getting compensated for it? Like of you have your day job, which is salary and your gay job, which is just your, your passion. And then secondary kind of falls into that as like, are we disproportionately expecting those who are directly impacted by the corporate advocacy to do the work? And so maybe Ray or, or Arrow, you could speak to a partial portion of that of, you know, I, I think it's kind of the unfortunate reality in which we live, but love to hear your perspectives. So in terms of at what point do we push back? Um, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we have the ability to, to, to push back because someone's got to do the work. Um, so for me, this, for me, it doesn't feel like work. And I think I just had this conversation with, you know, one of my managers the other day, you know, they really appreciated, I was on vacation the last two weeks and, you know, I had lost my grandfather and yet this is the work that I took priority in taking care of that equal conference and making sure that, you know, the, the Boeing company was well represented with our workshops and making sure all of our teammates were well prepared. While I put my day job on hold while I was on vacation, I still took passion into doing this. And so I think that in order for us to continue to progress and make things better, we've, we've got to put in the work and, and hopefully we get to a point where it's just common and we won't, you know, maybe one day they'll they'll pay for us to to do this work but um until then i think we just gotta you know keep on pushing forward what are your thoughts errol yeah i would i would say the same you know it's i think that struggle is real for a lot of other companies as well although companies are evolving and there are some major companies who are now paying for erg work um i still feel you know inside that anything that is incentivized is prioritized um but until we get there, someone has to advocate for our employees. Someone has to advocate for the communities who don't have, you know, the voice to advocate for themselves. And that's where, you know, that's what means the most to me. Um, a lot of times I am on my computer from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. <laughs> and I don't step away. And it's just because I have that dedication to serve. Um, so it's definitely a calling and it's something that people are called in. So you have to make that determination for why you're in it. Um, and, you know, and sometimes you may have to take a break and come back. Like it's okay to, to step down and take a break. Um, I see Alex drop is on the, on the call. And, you know, one thing that stood out for me that he said last year is like, you know, I'm taking a break and I'm stepping down to work on my career. And that is okay because he's still doing great things, you know, in between that time. So, I want people to know that it's okay to step down and the younger group is going to come and step up and move, make moves as well. Yeah, I, I, I think it's kind of the unfortunate reality of, of which we live, and especially as, as marginalized, you know, members of marginalized communities that a lot of times the, the, first, the first voice to be heard of necessity has to be ours because people outside of the community don't necessarily understand and don't necessarily have that kind of that focus or vision on, on where are the gaps, what what needs to be done. You know, there, there's things that they could do, but still we have to be a part of those discussions to guide them and make sure that they are doing it because even worse than us doing the work ourselves is having somebody who has no perspective or direct connection to anybody doing the work on our behalves and putting us in a place that we we never wanted to be and is potentially even worse than it is now, even though their motivations may be good. And like while while it's not something that I'm I'm compensated for, I think, you know, Era, I loved what you said that it's a calling. Like it, it is vocational work. It is not something that I do because I want a paycheck. Would it be nice to be compensated for this work and to be able to focus more solely and holistically on it? Yes, absolutely. But until that opportunity arises, I'll still gladly give my spare time. I'll still gladly give my energy. I'll give up sleep in order to make sure that people, not just me, that people who are coming after us have more resources, have, have more at their disposal, have more of a voice, more visibility within their organizations. And that's, that's payment compensation enough. But it would be nice if we lived in an ideal world. But we live here. and. There's a lot of stuff that you've just got to take because it's the way it is. And working within those confines and those structures and those frameworks to ch 
change the system, to change people's outlooks in, in their perspectives and, and what they want to do. So yeah, money's nice, but just the, the, the change and the impact that you have on people's lives. Like for instance, the, the one Boeing employee who was directly impacted by being able to have a wig and finally feeling seen and whole, that was such a powerful thing. And that's just one person. But that one person, it had a profound effect on their life. And it's a direct impact of what came out of this group, of what nobody was paid for and what we are only doing because there is a need. There are people who are swirling around trying to find this stuff. And we want to be able to put it in front of them so that they don't have to work for it, that it's there, they know about it and they're supported because it's a really complex thing to have to navigate on your own transition period, let alone within all of the things that you have to do within your organization of policies and you know, systems and, and all of that. It's, it's massive, but I, thank you all. I, I know we're getting close on time, but I, I just wanted to say thank you to all who have attended this. You know, there's about probably like another 10 you know, sessions you could have chosen from for this this time. And I really appreciate you guys choosing to to hear us and to stick around and thank you. And yeah, we'll we'll stick around for a little bit longer too if you guys have questions anymore that you want to discuss and all I, it's not going to be a hard cutoff, but yeah, thank you all. Thanks everyone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah and don't be a stranger. If you want to learn more, if you want to connect, you know, message through through the Pathable portal. Um, I'll also put my LinkedIn and my my Deloitte email in the chat here if you'd like to reach out directly to me outside of Pathable. But also that that goes to my Deloitte email. So if you if you miss it in the chat or, or don't send it, you can always reach out to me that way, and I'm more than happy to connect with with anyone who's in attendance or anybody who you want to pass it on to. But thank you all. <laughs>